this looks like a subject that should interest everybody. In order to see these holy men to good advantage, we will take the train from Bombay and go to Allahabad, which rivals Benares as a center of religious importance in the eyes of all Hindus. Nowhere in the world can you travel so far, so comfortably, and for so little money as on the Indian State Railways, and the public take full advantage of the facilities. To me, every wayside station is a source of interest. I never tire watching these people. Time means absolutely nothing to them. If a man should miss the weekly train to his particular part of the country, he camps out on the platform until the next train goes, no matter how long he has to wait. Hindus, Mohammedans and untouchables, to say nothing of Europeans, will not drink from the same fountain. Hence the railway company has to provide special facilities for each of these groups. Reaching Allahabad, we find the platform somewhat crowded. People are arriving by the thousands to take part in a great gathering, or Kum Mela, as it is called, on the banks of the river Ganges. In former years, hundreds of men and women were trampled to death in the immense crowds. But now the railway officials have devised a system of pens into which the travelers are ushered, 3,000 at a time. This has greatly reduced the number of fatalities, but deaths still occur in spite of all precautions. It is not only by rail that pilgrims come. Every form of conveyance is to be seen bringing devout Hindus from all corners of India to attend this great festival which is held once every 12 years. Freaking bullock carts figure largely in the scene. They are loaded down with whole families and their household effects. Many there are who walk long distances rather than miss this important event. The poorer people camp out in the open. They sit around in groups, gossiping with their neighbors and feeding on the inevitable rice and curry. Refreshing drinks are to be had, made from the juice of sugar cane, squeezed out in this primitive manner. And believe me, drinks are necessary in the hot and dusty atmosphere. Statistics show that one and a half million people attend this festival. The better class Hindus live in tents or else grass huts built for the occasion. Passers by, Salam, a high class Brahmin. A devout pilgrim reads from the Hindu scriptures. He also is a man of high caste, as you can tell by the marks on his forehead. On the banks of the river we find thousands more arriving by boat, which brings us to the real reason for this colossal gathering. According to Hindu mythology, the waters of the Ganges, where they are joined by those of the Jamna, are particularly sacred, and every orthodox Hindu should bathe here at least once during his lifetime. By so doing, he acquires special merit and materially increases his chances of getting promptly to heaven. If we return once more to the center of this human ant's nest, we will have no trouble in finding some of the holy men whom we have come to see. Mohammedans call them Fakir. The Hindu name is Sadhu. There are 1,250,000 Sadhus in India, and none of them do a stroke of work from the day they are born to the day they die, but live on food and money given them by the rest of the population. The sadhu often starts life as a boy, but growing older, they go into seclusion until such time as they have complete mastery over their physical senses and can stand extremes of pain that would kill an ordinary mortal. 
The sadhu never cuts his hair, a custom which is apt to give him a very effeminate appearance. Notice this one, he's no lady. Some will sit motionless for days without saying a word, but many take life less seriously and enjoy chatting with their followers. It is not talcum powder with which their faces are covered, but ashes. Watch the man on the left. Ashes from a nearby fire. The man on the right accepts a garland of flowers from some admirer. And another one less frivolous allows an offering of rice and money to be placed at his feet by some passing women. Amongst these thousands of sadhus and religious mendicants are to be found many that are deformed. Some come naturally by their misfortunes, but others are deformed intentionally at birth by their parents, so as to become a source of revenue to the family in later years. This is one of the many problems with which the government of India has to contend. This sadhu shows his indifference to physical suffering by sitting on sharp nails and thorns and another one by being swung upside down over a blazing fire. How would you like to measure your length on the ground all day long, wherever you went? or roll your way through life after the manner of this. And here is the human ostrich who buries his head rather than look upon the sins of the world. I felt like burying my own head. I had seen enough monstrosities to last me a lifetime. So I turned towards the station, hoping to escape from the throbbing crowds about me. But still they came, and still they came. Hundreds of them, thousands of them, millions of them.